So both uh, iron ore up at the Masabi Range in Minnesota, okay, which is Duluth, and the presence of coal in not only Illinois, southern Illinois is heavily coal underneath the, but also the anthracite coal in Pittsburgh. They could get uh, coal there a lot cheaper than they could get iron ore to Pittsburgh. Okay, so Chicago actually at one point, Chicago Gary, Indiana, which is on the other side of the Indiana Chicago line. Chicago is actually making more steel than Pittsburgh, okay, although if they named the football team in Pittsburgh, call the steel there. So, and, 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 and Fan Steel, that, that was the company that I flashed up there, they were not a steel company as such, they were specialty metals, uh, molybdenum, titanium, uh, tantalum steel, you know, very, very, and it was called uh, severe met uh, specialty metals for severe environments, is their company model, and made part of the space capsule. Oh, yeah. um, the Milwaukee perspective of the current violence in, in, in Chicago, uh, uh, largely south side, black, black on black, and right. largely due to the deconstruction of the stock yards. And this is a thriving community. Stock yards. Stock yards. Stock yards. <laughs> the back of the yards. Right. The well, it's, it's, that's southwest side. Go ahead. And it's more it's ethnic group. Yeah. yeah. 35th of all. Go ahead. We made a great deal of that, uh, that, that industry was shipped overseas. We shipped to Mexico and uh, the steel industry. And well, the steel industry still exists in Gary. Not, there's not a there's not a ton of steel being produced in Chicago, at, other than other than recycled steel at the uh, mill that uh, Rod Wojewicz's father uh, worked at, the Finkel Steel Mill, which is now being moved. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, Chicago has like a 10% unemployment rate. Uh, I believe Illinois has the highest unemployment rate outside of Nevada. Okay, what does that tell you? I mean, Chicago politics, okay? I mean, <laughs> who, who, would, who would put a plant up if you know your workers are going to get shot at the park, okay? I mean, <laughs> you got the Bears, the Blackhawks, World Championships. <laughs> Cubs? <laughs> I've lived <laughs> Yes? Generic question. Um, what's the, now, what's the relationship of the Chicago Police Department with the black community? Is it a tension there? Oh, it's, it, it, it's, it's an occupied, uh, you know, the, the south and west sides are occupied territory. I mean, uh, it, I mean, the, the, the police department is the, the, the percentages of the police department ex-Hispanics, there are very few Hispanic officers, but the, the Chicago's population is about 42% white, 37% black, and about, uh, what, I mean, that's about 18% Hispanic or rest Asian, okay? Um, these are rough numbers. I mean, don't, don't hold me to it, you know, probably within 10%. At any rate, the point is that... Um, the, the police department is, is significantly black, less Hispanic, um, and, uh, but because of um, various decisions at the, at the brass, they put a lot of white officers in the black areas, okay, and they don't put a lot of black officers in the white areas, okay? I mean, that, that could be part of the political way that the police department runs. And, Chicago Police Department has always been extremely political, okay? I mean, the, the, the new fellow, uh, Gary McCarthy, is the first uh, police commissioner uh, who did not spend his career in Chicago, okay, in a, in a long time, okay? Um, the last guy, Jody Weiss, was a, was a Phoebe, an FBI agent, but he had spent his career in Chicago for the most part. And he essentially was... A, put into the job because uh, of various uh, concerns that the federal government had over corruption in the police department. Yes? I uh, was uh, 22 years old in 1952 when uh, Abby Stevenson ran for president. Right. And you just mentioned, and I came from New York, I didn't know anything about Chicago. And I came at from the point of view of international affairs. 
some kind of an idealist. He was. In fact, I later learned that he was a Unitarian, but I never knew that until about five years ago. But in any case, you mentioned that Adam Stevenson was backed by some Jewish lawyer. Yep. And you said his name real quick, and I didn't get it. Colonel Jake Arvey. Arvey? A-V-A-R-V-E-Y. Ar now, what kind of business was he in? How did he do it? Well, he was a West Side political operative uh, from the, uh, I believe, the Lawndale area. And the West Side of Chicago uh, had been significantly Jewish. This is a suburban. No, no, this is Chicago proper. This is like around 30, 33rd Street and uh, Kedzie. 30, uh, that's Douglas Park uh, area. And uh, he, Colonel Jake Arvey, I don't know what his, whether he was a Kentucky colonel or actually. Uh, had uh, you know a, a earned military rank, but uh, he uh, he was a uh, uh, a political operative. He'd been an alderman, and he was the head of the Cook County Democratic Party in in the 50s. And he was getting on in years. And and he, he, there was the prior two mayors of Chicago before Richard J. Daley, the shoot to kill guy, not not his son. Um, had been named Kelly and Kennelly. So Chicago had been an Irish controlled uh, city politically for, for some time. Um, and uh, there, there's an old adage about that. Um, I, I didn't mention the role of the Catholic Church in this, and, and it probably would have been a lot more boring than what I already did. But, uh, <laughs> but there, there, the Catholic Church is, is intimate. Inter inextricably intertwined with, with Chicago politics, undeniably. Um, the, la the first three cardinals of Chicago, of, of Chicago, and Chicago was the second city in the United States to get a cardinal after New York, um, had all been German. Uh, cardinal Mundelein, Cardinal Strick, and whose niece is Elaine Strick, the, the Broadway dancer and singer. And, uh, and uh, Cardinal uh, Meyer, who was the cardinal when I was a young boy. They were all German. And so the question is, why did the Germans control the church? Okay, in, a, in, in Chicago, as I suppose elsewhere, the Roman Catholic Church was actually a bunch of national churches in neighborhoods. So you had your Latvian parish, you had your Polish parish, you had your German parish. I live a block away from an old German parish. In, in Chicago, on, on the north side, he had he even had Hispanic parishes back when. Okay, and the answer was, well, the Irish control the government. Let's have the Germans control the church. That that that, that string was broken in the '60s when a fellow named by the name of Cody, uh, who was an Irishman by way of St. Louis and New Orleans. Um, had uh, became the cardinal, but he his his reign as such was uh, checkered because of his relationship with a uh, Helen Wilson. And anyway, be that as it may, yes. Uh, could you comment on two Chicagoans who ran for president, uh, Mosley Brown, in uh, 2004, I believe. Go ahead. And uh, Obama in uh, 2008. I mean, Chicago back people. But what about um, the importance of uh, Chicago in national politics? Well, it's a good point and good question. And, and um, Carol Mosley Braun had been the senator. Uh, she was elected in 1992, uh, beating in a primary a fellow who had been the senator for, I think, uh, 18 years named. Al the Pal Dixon from uh, Southern Illinois. And Al Dixon had voted for the confirmation of Clarence Thomas in the confirmation hearings in 1991. And that, that 1992 rolls around and he faces a uh, primary battle from Carol Mosley Braun. There was a third party, or third candidate in the race. And so Carol won with like, it was like 37, 35, 32, whatever. And that was the uh, the, the vote split, so it was very, very close. And she was a one-termer, and uh, she, she was uh, defeated by a fellow who went to Dartmouth College, uh, 
uh, Peter Fitzgerald. Uh, and then Obama uh, ran for that seat. Fitzgerald decided he didn't really like the uh, Senate too much. And uh, he, re he retired or resigned, and there was a bunch of political scandals involving who was going to run on the Republican side. They even mentioned Mike Dick. I don't have a picture of him, but he was going to run for, for senator for, uh, in, in 2004. Well, at any rate, you, you asked about uh, uh, Carol Mosley Braun's um, candidacy for president. After being senator, she had been the uh, ambassador to New Zealand. So she was trying to tout that experience uh, on international affairs. Carol Mosley Braun, whom I've met, uh, maybe after a few drinks I'll tell you how, um, <laughs> it, it, it is one of the least congenial people you will ever meet. I, I, and I mean that, okay? She, she has absolutely no political, um, you know, like gift of gab, if you will, okay? And, and I can, you know, look, I, I'm a partial Irish extraction, so I, maybe I have a little of that, but, I, but I'm not political. Okay, so maybe I'm from this place. But the point is that she is not a congenial person, and she's always on the defensive. She's always trying to defend herself against some charge or something like that. She doesn't know how to do the wrestling move of jujitsuing these people back to espouse her. Um, but she was essentially a plant, okay? Um, in the 2004 election, uh, at least as I remember the events, um, she, uh, there was questions about Kerry's uh, experience in military affairs because he was essentially a, uh, you know, a anti-Vietnam protester. So in order to diffuse that, the Clintons, who were still controlling the Democratic Party, put Wesley Clark up. Okay, so he would suck off all those votes. Okay, and 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 then there was Al Sharpton, who was involved in the 2004. If my recollection is correct, I, I wasn't anticipating this picture, this question. So Al Sharpton was going to run for president in 2004. So who do the Clintons go to? They go to their designated black woman. Uh, Carol Mosley Braun to defuse the, the Al Sharpton. So <laughs> she was a total non-factor, okay? Obama. Um, Obama caught lightning in a bottle, okay? 2008, he goes to Iowa, which if you look at a map, it's right next to Illinois. He goes out there well before anybody else and he starts cultivating the college campuses. And uh, Iowa, anybody here from Iowa? Any ever, here, ever been in Iowa? I mean, I've been, <laughs> I've been to Iowa, okay. I've been to Iowa. You know, but it, it, I'm sorry? Okay, but have you been there? Okay, okay, good. Um, Iowa has a lot of small colleges. Grinnell, Cornell. Help me out here. I mean, it's like Simpson College. Uh, she used to be an anti-draft dodger place. At any rate, the point is, or, or a pro-draft dodger. You go to, if you were dodging the draft, you could go to Simpson. Um, the point is that Obama Co-College, Co Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Decorah, Iowa. Right. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much. The point is that there are all these colleges in Iowa, small colleges, in addition to the university in Iowa State, uh, that, you know, this was a political mind waiting to be tapped. And so in, in, in the caucuses, it's not like, you know, go and vote, you know, hands up. Everybody stands in a corner. You know, they say, okay, all the people for, for uh, you know, Hillary, you know, go stand in this corner. Okay, they probably should tell them to turn their face to the corner. But anyway, be that as it may. <laughs> Uh, you know, all, all in for Obama go to that corner. All for whoever else was running back then. I don't remember. I, I remember it doesn't work that well anymore. Uh, go so, and then there would be these essentially rough calculations. It wouldn't be, you know, it, you know, to the letter accuracy. So, 
But Obama won those things. Going away, he, you know, he, he, he had a, you know, and then, and, and then, you know, you went into the real primaries, and the, the, the first primary after Super Tuesday that mattered was the Illinois primary, as I recall, and Obama won that against, it's against Hillary Clinton, who had grown up in Park Ridge, which is about eight or ten miles from where Joan and I each live. So, you know, he just, if you, if you added up all the votes that Hillary got and all the votes that Obama got in the, in the several primaries, Hillary probably had more votes. I, I think, you know, there's been some very good analysis of this. I mean, but because of the, the way the caucuses were rigged, orchestrated, shall we say. Obama won Idaho. <laughs> there you go. Obama won Idaho. Well, I know, but he also won, like, Nevada, too, because he got the... Uh, the unions behind him, the, all the casino worker unions. Anyway, any rate, Obama had, you know, he was an obscure state senator. He was an obscure state senator who had no legislative, he voted present more often than, you know, other, uh, he had these goings on with this fellow named Tony Resco, who ultimately brought down Blagojevich. Um, and he, uh, when he ran for senator in 2004, he, uh, beat a very uh, struggling Republican Party. The, the fellow who was originally nominated was named Jack Ryan, who, by the way, went to Dartmouth. Uh, <laughs> and got, got, he did us proud. He, he got involved in a sex scandal with his, uh, his wife, who was nothing hard to look at, named Jerry Ryan, who was on a TV show. Um, and uh, he, had, he, he withdrew, he resigned, and then they talked to Ditko about becoming the uh, Republican nominee. That went nowhere. And they finally got this guy named Alan Keyes, who moved from Maryland just for the uh, experience of running for senator. Black man, black conservative. But I mean, so Obama was two years into a senatorial career, United States Senate, not Illinois Senate, uh, when he decided to run for president. You know, and he had that speech on the steps in. Springfield, where the Capitol building had been around then, that would where, where where Abraham Lincoln would have been, but it, that Capitol building wasn't built when Abraham Lincoln was running for president. So, yes, Ben. Do you think there's there's going to be any change with the trend that the last seven governors out of the last seven governors of Illinois, four of them served. In the joint, yeah. <laughs> well, I, 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 can, I can offer a bit of perspective about that, okay? I mean... Hard Rock College. Hard Rock College, yeah. You know, um, the, the first of that illustrious uh, uh, crew of guests of the federal government was a fellow named Otto Kerner, who uh, had been the governor of Illinois, and then he became a sitting judge on the federal appellate court. He was indicted when he was, you know, hearing cases that would be, you know, ultimately going to that court on appeal. Yep, same gentleman. Well, yeah, he and he uh, he was convicted of uh, tax evasion and uh, lying under oath, which is something, by the way, uh, having been involved in the federal criminal system, you never want to do. Okay, I mean you. The feds take perjury extremely seriously, okay? So he had gone into the grand jury and lied about something he knew, and that was ultimately what, what Blagojevich was initially convicted of after the first trial. He, he died in prison, um, but I know his adopted son, and there's a story there, um, and the adopted son wears a very fine wig. Um, he, uh, he uh, has spent the last 30 years trying to exonerate his father because he thought that he was railroaded by Jim Thompson. Okay, so that's one. Dan Walker was uh, one of my father's law school classmates, and uh, he, he was convicted of a crime after he became governor, um, after he left the governor's office, he, and, and it was not related. George Ryan was convicted of crimes committed while he was uh, Illinois Secretary of State. Although there was a tax charge that was 
if it if it had only been the tax charge, he probably wouldn't have gotten gone to prison for it. Okay, it was a tax charge. He he went to Cuba on a, like a trade mission, and he and this was paid for by some third party who wasn't on the Illinois taxpayer, and because he went to Cuba, and we don't have diplomatic relationships with Cuba, it was, he, he, he got a benefit that he did not clear on, declare on his taxes as income. Same way, you know, that the, uh, insurance was not something that you would have to declare on your taxes as, as an income equivalent. any rate, and, and now we have Blagojevich, who used to be my congressman, uh, can't escape these people, and... <laughs> Well, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. Excellent insight. I give the Congressman Peter back, and uh, I thank you for your attention and questions. I mean, I, I didn't bring uh, David, up... David, I'm sure, has dozens more anecdotes to share on, on that fascinating city. Sort of as a sidebar, the former mayor of Detroit yesterday was sent, Kwame Kilpatrick, who was here 28 years. 